Coming up on this Friday edition of Morning Creative, what can Peter Parker teach us about creating a call to arms? And what on earth does that have to do with creativity anyway? Welcome to Morning Creative. I'm Mark Stedman, and I used to be friends with a band, a local band, and I really liked their music. I really enjoyed it. And they had glimmers of notoriety, but I always felt like they deserved a lot more than they got. I flew the flag for them whenever I could, and they even had a couple of well-known fans. But they ultimately couldn't make it stick. And the band went their separate ways, not due to artistic differences, as far as I'm aware anyway, but because they had to get jobs. <laughs> they, you know, they, they, and they had lives to live and people took them places and they had to go places, you know, life happened. Now, a couple of years ago, the lead singer passed away. I don't know why. And I, I you can even infer there where, where I've said, I don't know why, you know, it's not my place to infer how or why that happened. Uh, but what I do know is that I don't want good art to go unnoticed or to be forgotten. And I don't want people to give up on their creative dream, on their big work, because right now it feels like they're talking into the void or they're not getting the recognition that they deserve. So that is why this podcast exists. And that is why this is very much just the beginning of the work I want to do. Now, I'm not here to present any kind of plan or program to you. I have no membership to sell, uh, no no scheme to promote. But, it, you know, I know that there is something that I want to do and it starts and maybe even ends with with this podcast and with you and me. I think that's where it ends is with you and me and the people that we that we bring along. So that thing that I just did there, true as it is, is a piece of public narrative. It is a communication style developed by a Harvard professor called Marshall Gans. And it kind of runs in leadership circles, but it applies to creative work. And all this month, we are talking about connection. And for me, what better way to connect with people than by sharing your origin story, by telling someone else why they should care, and then inviting them or even urging them to do something about it. And we'll get on to, you know, you, you may think, oh, I'm just, I'm just a whatever, whatever that just is. You may think this all sounds a bit lofty. I'm not trying to create a movement, but kind of in a way, maybe you are, and we'll get to that. But it all starts with, I think, called the story of self, the story of us, and the story of now, which are these three components of, the, uh, of this idea of public narrative. So let's start with the story of self. This is a personal story that uh, shows us why you were called to what you were called to do. What is that spark that, that um, or in hero, you know, hero's journey terms, what was the call to adventure? It's a way of communicating your values and inviting us to connect with you and with those values. And it presents a, a, a specific challenge. Uh, it presents the, the choice that you made in order to step up and deal with that challenge. And it talks about the outcome that you experienced when you did take on that challenge. So if we look at Peter Parker, right, uh, the the eponymous Spider-Man, let's imagine Peter Parker, I, I'm not a, like, I, I've enjoyed some of the Marvel films and stuff, but I'm not like a big, big, you know, Marvel or comic guy, but you know, here's a man whose origin story we all know, right? So it's nice and easy for us to follow. And there is one of the films where he gets recruited into the Avengers. Well, let's, you know, this big crime fighting team, right? That's, if you don't know this stuff, that's probably all you need to know. The Avengers, uh, headed up by Iron Man, Tony Stark, big crime fighting team. And let's, let's say in our universe, Tony Stark didn't come to Spider-Man. Spider-Man wants to go and join the Avengers. And so he's got to try and convince Tony Stark why he should join the Avengers. So Peter might start by sharing his personal journey. He's going to highlight the transformation that he underwent in order to become Spider-Man, right? Bit by radioactive spider while on a class trip and web shooty, put on the suity, yada, 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 right? That's it. He might talk about his struggles growing up in Queens, uh, feeling like an outsider and uh, grappling with the loss of his uncle Ben, 
and he might he might speak to the the sense of responsibility inspired by his uncle and those famous words that we know with great power comes great responsibility he might mention when he decided to use his abilities that he discovered you know putting on the suit and then wanting to protect the city out of that sense of responsibility or perhaps guilt for the maybe preventable death of his uncle and and how that spurred him on to go okay i want to do some good in this city i want to use what i've got uh to protect people so that's the story of self that's him his origin story there's his call to adventure bam you know the 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 opening credits come up and we actually start the story right and then we go into the story of us. Uh, so this is the moment where we outline our shared purpose, our goals, and our vision of how we want to see the world. But we're outlining that to and for a group of people. So we're, we're focusing on a particular challenge or a choice or an outcome that we want uh, to achieve. And again, I'll, I will sort of talk a little bit more uh, about kind of challenge and outcome and, and, and what that might be for you. And it invites other people to be part of that group. That's the crucial thing, right? We are recruiting. This is a, a rallying cry, a call to arms. We are, you know, in, in in Peter Parker's case, he's trying to join the Avengers. But for our case, it might be that we want to create our own superhero team to go and battle whatever we want to battle, right? Uh, so going back to Parker then, he's going to emphasize the challenge uh, that, he, uh, that is faced by everyday people living in New York, uh, and across the world as well, in a world that is now suddenly beset by superpowered threats, right? He's going to discuss the importance of teamwork and collaboration and how uh, we can all work together. And maybe he's going to bring up times where he's worked alongside other heroes to beat some bad guys. Uh, he might talk about how the Avengers represent I know hope and protection uh, and all those kinds of things that the the Avengers stand for. He's going to talk about the need for a diverse perspective and abilities because he's he's much younger than most of the other superheroes, uh, and so he's got his own set of skills and his own sort of different lower to the ground kind of uh, perspective. And you know, he might talk about why that's important. And you know, if he's speaking to Tony Stark, he's going to remind him of the times teamwork and collective action saved the day. So that's the story of, of of us. That's bringing us into your world and saying, this is how my story can connect with you, you and yours. And then we get on to the story of now. So this is where we talk about the current challenges that we face, uh, choices that we might have to make, and the hope that we aspire to. Again, it's, and we will talk about this a little bit later, it's that vision of a better world. It's that vision of the world as you want it to be even if it's a small change. It's kind of got to be urgent and and rooted in the values that we talked about when we talked about the story of self and the story of us, because it's really connecting me, you, and then what we're going to do. It's actually making that, getting it on its feet, making it, I use the word kinetic a lot, but, you know, making it actionable. And it is kind of, it is kind of a call to adventure. It is that moment where we talked about when we, stepped over the threshold and we answered the call and now we're inviting you to answer the call because it needs answering because it's urgent uh, it's important so in peter parker terms uh he might address the immediate threats facing the world uh whether that's in new york uh where i guess avengers tower is i don't know or in the wider world you know some new threat from asgard or something I don't know. He might talk about recent incidents that show the need for a united front against villains, right? He might reference, you know, what happened in Ant-Man and the Wasp or whatever. We need to make sure that... <laughs> he might talk about how he's ready to step up and contribute. He might make that point to say, I wasn't ready. I absolutely am now. And perhaps uh, if I'm ready, so so you can be too. And he's going to show his, his track record of, of taking on uh, bad guys at a young age, again, to show that it is possible. So when we tell our origin story, we can turn it into that rallying cry, into that call to adventure, into a call to arms. We've just got to connect our experience to theirs. That's the us bit. And then think about the collective action that we want people to take and why it has to be taken. And that is the now part. So, all right, how does this apply to me? Let's say, let's say you're a Twitch streamer. 
and you're thinking, okay, my art, like I, I, I believe this is, you know, I'm creating things. I'm being funny. I'm being interesting. And that is the medium that I, I use, you know, I, I do, I do voices or I do bits or I have a friend on and we have a discussion, but I do that while I'm playing games. And that is what I do. Right. So if you're listening to this and this all feels a little bit like high minded and you're, you know, for example, a Twitch streamer, let me introduce you to Stuart Goldsmith. Now he is, he's a good, he's a good stand up. Uh, he also presents the comedians comedian podcast where he interviews world famous comedians. Now, I've, Saw him perform a few years back, and I've talked about this before. He's warm, he's smart, and he thinks a little in these kinds of circles, by the way, as well. And that's kind of that's why I listed him as a potential ambassador when we were talking about ambassadors uh, last week, or was it earlier in this week? Time is a flat circle. Um, that is why uh, I mentioned him because he, he imbues a lot of the traits or the attributes that I would want from someone who's going to fly the flag for me. He now labels himself partly as a climate comedian. And so he's now using his comedy to address the climate crisis. And he now gets paid by vested interests in, you know, saving the world to go and gig for them. So think about that. Think about how we can take something that on the face of it, yes, is art, but it's like, well, my job is to stand up and make you laugh. How can that have a bigger purpose? Well, Stuart Goldsmith managed to do that. He's managed to connect a purpose to the stuff that he does without it being too wide-eyed and too earnest. Like, he's still a stand-up. He's still going to make people laugh. That's what he does. So I've talked about this before, about your vision of the world as you want it to be, right? I think you can think about what really bothers you on a fundamental level or something that you wish could change or that you had the power to change or if only people would just dot 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 right i've talked about that before there is something in you if you haven't found it already there is something in you that you're like this is i just wish this you know maybe it connects to someone that you know someone in your life maybe it connects to a past experience and you think if only the world worked like this or if only this was just a little bit better then maybe that would feel like a mission accomplished So with that in mind, how might that influence the art that you make if it doesn't already? And, you know, perhaps it does. Perhaps you are already, you know, climate's a great example. It's very big in our mind and easy. You know, you might make, you might be an illustrator. You might be uh, an author and you might, even a fiction, but you might be thinking in terms of how does this relate to the fact that the heat death of the universe is being accelerated at, at rapid degrees. So if that it may, maybe that's already in your work and maybe it isn't, but now is a time to think about whether that is something that you want to put into your work. Now I picked Twitch streaming as, as an example here because if, you know, not to uh, dissuade anyone or not to, you know, denigrate the art, but you know, perhaps it feels on the more frivolous end of, of that world. But you could easily do a socially conscious Twitch stream, which is a surprisingly difficult collection of syllables to say. So I will say it again. You could easily do a socially conscious Twitch stream. Now, many of those may already exist. I don't know. It's not a world that I'm I'm hugely uh, familiar with. But it's absolutely something that you could do. You could play games and you could talk about the gender pay gap. You could do your makeup and talk about being neurodiverse in navigating the job market, you know? If you can connect your art with the vision of how you want the world to work, even just by a small degree to make it just that little bit better, then there's no limit to what you can do. So time for uh, an extra shot. This is something that I I think is cool and I want to let you know about. Um, And today... It is the latest episode of The Talk Show with John Gruber. So this is a very Apple-focused show, and it gets very nerdy and in the weeds about Apple stuff. But this episode I wanted to bring to you because it's with a chap called Adam Lissagor, who is the uh, top dog at a video company called Sandwich. They are a, a great company to follow and dig into. They make videos for all sorts of companies that often kind of 
live in a certain nerdy space. But in this particular episode, Adam is talking about the Vision Pro, uh, also whilst wearing it. So if you're interested in what that might sound like, then I uh, I urge you to check it out. You can go and subscribe uh, to the talk show. Just have a, a look for the latest episode. Uh, and I've obviously linked it in the show notes. So uh, I haven't checked it out yet, but it's, it's uh, going to be... Um, on my list for my walk tomorrow so uh i know i'm going to enjoy it and if you've got anything that you think i would be interested in or that other morning creators might enjoy mark at morningcreative.fm is the email address to get me on uh, and there are lots of other ways you can get me you can at hello stedman pretty much anywhere as did Jens when he uh, had a comment on episode 55 which is all about taste uh Jens says uh subjectivity sounds like a bad thing because it's largely, especially within academic circles, considered not valid. This causes people to steer away from it as much as possible and base whatever they say on scientific, quote-unquote, facts. Subjectivity is hardly ever looked at for what it actually is, a person's point of view. There's nothing wrong with looking at stuff through an objective lens, as far as that is possible. But what makes content consumable is the alignment of your current situation and views, the content creator's views, and the experiences they share. So that was all uh, in response to my uh, episode about what we are snobs about, which is, of course, highly subjective, and how our subjectivity can be used as interesting fodder for discussion and as a way of communicating or demonstrating your authority within a space so to uh, Jens I say yeah what he said and as ever at hello Stedman uh, if you want to get in touch and uh, you have any comments to add so before I leave you if you do just one thing today give this a go take a couple of minutes today and write down your origin story or record it as a voice note you might find that easier and then think about the people you want to connect with What is the connective tissue of your art? How does your origin story connect with something that they care about? And then why do they need to engage with your work? Why do they need your newsletter? Why should they buy your painting? Why would they watch your Twitch stream? It doesn't have to be big and bold like a superhero story. It just could be as simple as, I knew someone whose work deserved more, They're not around anymore. Regardless of whether those two things are connected, I don't want people to ever feel like their work went unnoticed or that they quit too soon. If you feel like you're working in isolation, this podcast is proof that you're not. Thank you so much for spending the last few minutes with me. It's been a real pleasure and a privilege as always. Next time then, can an ancient personality test tell us anything useful about how we create things? Well, you're brilliant. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll speak to you on Monday.